Welcome to Lifehouse if you're visiting with us. Delighted to have you here. Uh, what a great presence of the Lord is with us today. And the Lord has a plan. He has an agenda for us. And uh, we are welcoming the activity of the Holy Spirit. Everything has life that has life lives. Everything that lives moves in some fashion. The degree to which it moves ahead is directly related to the generosity that is around it. If there's lots of water and sunshine, crops grow, and they grow well. If a home is fun, is filled with love and laughter, the home grows. People want to stay there. Kids want to come back home because there's love there. Oil changes and regular maintenance will lay, let your car last as long as Lynn Leslie's truck. What is that, a 1970 or something? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Kind words, words that edify, they build an atmosphere in a group, an atmosphere in a church, or an atmosphere in a family. Do you know what would happen if on the, at the age of 21 through to 65, if you went to the bank and deposited $2 every day, that's a cup of coffee, you know how much money you'd have when you retire? One million dollars. Two bucks a day. Whatever you feed grows. When there is a generous atmosphere, it creates a generous harvest. A generous sowing creates a generous harvest. Well, I read this the other day and uh, I've put my name in for this company. Uh, Fortune magazine has named Hillcore one of the 100 best companies to work for. Uh, last year, they proved themselves worthy of this reward. They have 1,380 employees, soon to be 1,381. I submitted my resume. Because last Christmas, they gave every person in their company, are you ready? New? A hundred thousand dollar bonus. And guess what they, the people said? The, no, the people said, every one of us, every one of us, we're going to come to work, we're going to be happy, and we're going to work really hard. They got a hundred thousand dollar bonus. In Pickerton, Ohio, according to the Washington Post, a, pe a church ordered a pizza for an event uh, from Domino's Pizza at the end of a service. And uh, the, the driver brought the pizza to Sycamore Creek Church in Pickerton in the suburb of Columbus on October 4th. And Reverend Steve uh, Markle asked her to come on stage. When she came up on stage, they asked her this question. What is the best gift, what is the best tip you've ever had? And she said, about $10. And so the pastor stood and said, folks, the most gift she's ever had, the largest gift she's ever had is $10. We're going to come up with this bucket, and we'd like you to put a gift in there for this driver. And they counted afterwards. There was a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. The degree to which anything moves ahead is directly related to generosity. 
Let's say that again. The degree to which anything moves ahead is directly related to generosity. Why don't you say that with me? Here we go. The degree to which anything moves ahead is directly related to generosity. I'm going to read half the Bible to you. Actually, no, I'm not. But I'm going to read a good clip of Scripture out of Luke chapter 12. And so if you have your phone or your Bible, your iPad, whatever you're going to use, I'm going to ask you to turn to Luke chapter 12. I'm going to read uh, from verse uh, 13 through to verse number 34. And by the time I get there, we'll just pray and go home. <laughs> oh, make a liar out of me. No, that's good. Luke, Luke chapter 12, verse 13. Then someone called from the crowd. This is the new... Uh, living translation. Then someone called call from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. And Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to, declare, to, decide against such, or to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Your life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them this story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for my crops. Then he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear down my barns. I'm going to build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and all my goods. And I'm going to sit back and I'm going to say to myself, my friend, you, you've got enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Verse 21. Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Then turning to his disciples, Jesus said, This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, uh, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store in barns, for God feeds them. And you are much more valuable to him than any birds. Can, any, uh, can all your worries add one single moment to your life? And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over big things? Verse 27. Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for, for flowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Verse 29. And don't be concerned about what you'll eat or drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world. All over the world. But your father already knows your needs. Seek first the kingdom of God above all else, and he'll give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little flock, for, he gives your fa for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven. And the purses of heaven never grow old or develop holes. Your treasure will be safe. No thief can steal it and no moth can destroy it. Where your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Well, this is the parable about uh, the rich fool. And the rich fool went to Jesus and said, Jesus, tell my uh, brother to divide my father's inheritance. Now, I've been in ministry for 41 years, and I'm not sure how many people I've buried. Uh, I'm guessing... Probably four to five hundred. I don't know. I haven't done a count lately. And I've been in some funerals and dealt with some families. And you want to see people go orangutan. Talk about 
their will and how much they're going to get. And they mistake life from this, from this uh, position. Jesus said, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Well, the guy in our story has fallen head first into what makes Canada great. It's what keeps the advertisement business flourishing and it what keeps the bank doors open. Bigger is better. You could never have a new enough car. Ask GM. You could never have a big enough mortgage. Ask TD uh, Bank. You could never have enough of anything. Well, the average Canadian, we're, uh, I've just, I found this out, for every dollar that most that a Canadian makes, they owe a dollar seventy. Every dollar a Canadian makes, on average, they owe a dollar seventy. So the guy in our story, as I've read to you, and I'm sure you've picked it up, he decided what he needed was bigger and better. So rather than I know disperse his uh, stuff around, whatever he builds bigger and better, but then. He dies before he can enjoy all of his stuff. Read with me. The degree to which anything moves ahead is directly related to generosity. Thank you for the four people that read that with me. Let's read it again. The degree to which anything moves ahead is directly related to generosity. So if you look in verse 21... I'm going to, uh, I've got three translations up there for you. Here's the first one, the New Living Translation, which I've read to you. Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. And then uh, the, uh, the International Standard Version says it this way. That's how it is with a person who stores up treasure for himself rather than with God. And the bottom one is the New International Version. This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. So we've got the top one, does not have a rich relationship with God. The New or the International Version uh, 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 is not rich who stores up treasures himself rather than with God. And then the bottom one, the New and National, but is not rich towards God. I want to talk this morning about generosity. And when I talk about generosity, if I want lots of stuff in my life, I need to be generous with God. If I want lots of things in my life, I need to be generous with God. So in the next segment of our passage, and we're looking very quickly through it, we're looking at today, Jesus continues with the same manner. The crux of the issue is repeated. Don't worry about your stuff. Don't worry about your stuff. Seek God first and seek, uh, seek eternal treasures those are the things you're supposed to seek. So the degree to which anything moves forward is directly related to generosity. So here is what we're focusing on in this text. First of all, don't worry. So don't worry about your stuff. Don't worry about what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. But seek first the kingdom of God. And then he said, put your treasures in God's kingdom. Put your treasures in God's kingdom. Matthew 6 and verse 20 says the same thing. And so it was really interesting as Dan was leading us in worship today and the emphasis that he gave us on heaven. So what the text before us is saying is this. Do something right now so that when you get there, you will have 
riches there instead of here. All right? So the idea is putting your, king, putting your treasures in God's kingdom. And they're deposited there. And what the text is telling us is this. They're deposited there and they become available after you die. Live in such a way that the treasures that you're saving and pouring into will be received after you die. The degree to which anything moves ahead is directly related to generosity. I want to surround myself with generous people. I don't like cheap people. Sorry, I just, I need to get that. I don't like, my, my closest friends aren't cheap because I'm not cheap. I don't like cheap people. Don't like cheap friends. I, I, I want to be generous. I want to be with generous people. And I want to be surrounded with a spirit of generosity. I shouldn't tell family secrets. But I'll tell one family secret. And, but I won't say who said this. Except for a $500 donation to our building fund. We're on holiday. Everybody's on our, every, all our, our entire families there, all our kids, all our grandkids. Blah, 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 blah. And after the meal is done, I've taken it upon myself to kind of be the dishwasher on holiday. And uh, why have I done that? Because I'm generous. I am. I'm generous. So the comment was made at supper time one night. Everybody around here fights to see who can get up to watch, wash the dishes. What a great problem to have. If it was, if it was all true. I want to talk about having a generous atmosphere. I want to exist and function in a generous atmosphere, and I want to live generously. So here I've tucked this up on our slide lighthouse. Let's read together. Here we go. The... Okay. Are you ready for this? Our generosity is going to reflect... How far Lighthouse life house goes. There it is. That's the bottom line. Um, I happen to think the staff is outstanding in this church. I do. I think there's good staff here. I think the deacon board is phenomenal. I do. I think we got good deacons. But they will not push this church forward. The degree to which this church will move forward will be reflected in the spirit of generosity in our lives, all our lives. I've got some dry patches on my grass. and So yesterday I took some seed and I put some seed down. And I said to myself, self you should water this. But then you know what self said? God does my watering. <laughs> That's why my lawn doesn't look like Len Stride's lawn. And if I wasn't okay with that, I'd have to get more generous at my house. We are a thriving family pursuing life together and pointing others towards Jesus. So I want to have generosity. I want to have generosity of spirit. I want to have generosity in spirit when it comes to family. How many know that family has this great capability of being the most annoying thing you've ever laid two eyeballs on and the most wonderful thing you've ever laid two eyeballs on? 
Okay, so that's why everybody's like that around here. There's, they either really aggravate you to the nth degree or you really love them and nothing in between. But I want to be generous with my family. I, I want to be generous in my involvement, mobilizing every member of the family according to their God-given, according to their God-given purpose. So are you ready? Uh, I, want to, uh, I want to share three things with you and I'm going to do this quickly. Here's the three things I'm going to challenge you with today. First of all, I'm going to challenge you to be generous in your praying. That's the first thing. And then I'm going to challenge you to be generous in your giving. And thirdly, I'm going to challenge you to be generous in your involvement. So I'm going to encourage you and kind of press you on. So here, please remember this. This is very important. If Lifehouse is going to go forward, it's going to go forward by the amount of generosity that's poured into Lifehouse by all of us together. So the more generous we are as a congregation, the further Lifehouse will go. It won't go any further than what we are pouring into this. So here's the three challenges that you have. Now you're going to get a card. And uh, when you get this card, I'm going to walk you through the card. And uh, the cards are coming. Now, let me say something about this card. This card is your card. Uh, You don't have to hand this card in. You don't have to show anybody else your card. Uh, Nobody will phone you up and say, so what exactly did you put on your card? Uh, Will you please report that? So you're you're not telling anybody what's on your card because this is your card. And what we're asking people to do today is we're asking you to make a faith commitment on your card. And the faith commitment has three areas that I want to talk about. And we're going to move this on fairly quickly. It says in uh, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25, you should have a card that looks like this. The purple has different font, but the terminology should be identical, all being well. <laughs> okay? So, here is my commitment to generosity. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. So, why am I encouraging you in your walk of generosity? I'm encouraging you in your walk of generosity and I'm, talk, I'm going to give you some more of this next week. But the more generous I am, I'm almost the one that gets the best benefit out of it. And, but I'm going to show you that next week. So I won't preach two sermons at once. Okay? So the, ge- the generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. So here's the first thing that I'm going to ask you to be generous with. Give consideration to. And here's the terminology up here. I am committed to pray with others. I'm committed to pray with others. So I'm committed to come to either the pre-service prayer time, which is uh, 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings, uh, or prayer house, which is Wednesday at at, uh, 7 o'clock, or I'm committing myself to pray per weekly or monthly at one of those, or to pray privately X amount of minutes for Lifehouse. So what I'm after is this. I want you to make a faith pledge between you and Jesus and say, you know what, I I can go days, I can go weeks and really never think of the church, never really think of Lifehouse and what God's called us to. And so my faith pledge is to say, I'm going to pray five minutes a day for Lifehouse. That's what I'm going to do. So every day in my devotions, in my prayer time, I'm going to pray for five minutes a day for Lifehouse. Or I'm going to keep my, commit myself to coming to uh, the Sunday morning prayer at 9 o'clock. Or the Wednesday night prayer at uh, 7 o'clock. I'm committing myself to do that. Number one, prayer. Number two, give. I'm committing to invest, my, invest in the kingdom by giving, and I've, there's a blank here, to Lifehouse weekly or monthly. So let me say something here, and this is very important. Everybody in this room can give something. Not everybody in this room can give lots. Some can give lots, but everybody can give something. Okay, so let's settle on that fact. So everybody here needs to give something 
Because whose church is this? How do we move the church forward? By all of us being generous. Okay? So I'm asking you to ask yourself, well, what, what do I need to put in here? Now, some of you are giving basically nothing on a weekly basis. So if you were to give $10 a week, $5 a week, that's more than you're giving right now. And uh, some of you are regular tithers to this church, and you may be good to put your tithe in there. Some of you are giving more than your tithe. Uh, you can put that figure in there. And number three, get involved. I'm committed to get involved one hour a week. Uh, I'm willing to get involved one hour a month. I'm willing to get involved. Some of you would be doing good to do two hours a year. Okay? <laughs> uh, so, because the more generous we are, the further life's house is going to go. And so I'm asking you if you will make a prayerful consideration to this uh, prayer commitment, my commitment to generosity, that's before you right now. So let me tell you, I'm repeating myself. This is your faith commitment. You don't have to hand this in. You don't have to report to me. Nobody's going to phone you up and say, hey, Frank, uh, we're just doing a survey here. Uh, what'd you do for number three? Let me tell you about number three. So let's say that you're willing to make an hour uh, focus per week or an hour per month. And so you're asking me, well, what does that mean? What are you going to do? Well, what you need to do then is you need to contact the church office and say, you know what? I made a commitment of generosity and, uh, and uh, I, want to, uh, I, want to, I want to volunteer for an hour a month. You can contact the church office and we'll look, look after you from there on in. You don't have to figure that out yourself. My commitment to generosity. Now, I'm going to ask you just to close your eyes for a moment. And I'm going to ask you to say to the Lord, Lord, uh, I believe in life house. I believe I, I, I've been planted here by the Spirit of God. I'm not here by accident. I'm here intentionally. And uh, I want to see life house.